authority and say from pain to promise. From pain to promise. From pain to promise. This was a celebratory occasion in our text. It was a time of laughter, delight, and merriment. Abraham made a great feast. His son Isaac was weaned. He escaped the danger of infantile fatality. There was undoubtedly fabulous food and delicious drinks spread across the tables. But in the midst of this gala, there was a grudge going on. There was a problem at this party. There was a conflict at the carnival. Sarah made a staid and keen observation. She noticed uh, Isaac's brother Ishmael, now a teenager, scoffing at his brother Isaac. Ishmael was the son of Hagar, the Egyptian bond servant of Abraham and Sarah. And Sarah, without indecision, insists to Abraham that Hagar, her Egyptian rival, along with her son, be cast out. And now we have to go back just a little bit to give you a little history because the only reason that Hagar was there and that Hagar had a son by Abraham in the first place was because Sarah got impatient with God and told Abraham, take my bond servant and have a son with her. I find it interesting here now that when Sarah needed Hagar to help her out, uh -huh. mm, she was there. Yeah. But now that she has what she wanted, she doesn't want Hagar around anymore. Uh, Sarah will not have Ishmael share in or threaten her son's inheritance. Whatever Abraham has has to be for my son. And Ishmael can't have none of it. Although heartbroken, Abraham must hearken to Sarah's voice because it is the will of God. The narrative contains vivid theological analogies of biblical reference. This narrative is contained in the Pentateuch, which was written to Israel just as they were to enter the land of promise. It has similarities to the struggles and the situations of the nation itself. The themes of significance include promise, faith, seed, heir, Egypt, bondage, sons, and scoffing. At center stage of this drama stands the bondwoman Hagar. Hagar, maid servant of Sarah. She was under their command. She's playing a part written by another. Hagar was written into this story because Sarah was barren. But now she's being written out of the story because Sarah gave birth. In a previous scene, she was told to go back. But now she's being told to get out and stay out. Centuries later, the Apostle Paul uses the story of the bondwoman to preach and defend the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, but Paul was not uh, trying to vilify Hagar. Uh, Paul was not trying to say anything negative about Hagar because there's something that we can learn about her situation. Let's consider the burden that Hagar had to bear. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hagar had to deal with the hurts and hard times of life. And the hurts and hard times she had to deal with also correspond with a large and growing population of people in our society. Oh, yeah, the burden of Hagar is being a single mother. The burden of Hagar is being divorced from her husband. The burden of Hagar is being homeless. The burden of Hagar is not having a bank account. The burden of Hagar is not knowing where the next meal is coming from. 
The burden of Hagar is not even having a shelter to go to. Hagar is going through some burdens that many in our society have to go through. There's three particular things I want to talk about uh, when it comes to Hagar. I want to consider her separation. I want to consider her struggle. And then I want to consider her solution. First of all, when we consider her separation, Genesis 21, 14, 15 says, So Abraham rose early in the morning, took bread and a skin of water, putting it on his shoulder. He gave it to Hagar and the boy and sent her away. Then she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba, and the water in the skin was used up. She ran out of water. She put the boy under one of the shrubs, and she was sent away from Abraham. She was kicked to the curb. Come on, somebody. She was told to vacate the premises. She could no longer occupy the home with all of its surroundings and comforts, all of its securities, all of its blessings, like the scapegoat. She was sent away from the presence of the people. She was to be forgotten. She was to be dismissed. Her services were no longer needed. Her presence was no longer tolerable. She was rejected. She was torn away from everything familiar. Imagine the shame. Consider the hurt. Consider the humiliation. She must have felt used and betrayed. And she could understand and she could expect Sarah's treatment but Abraham was a different story she bore Abraham's first son in her heart and mind Abraham had on many occasions throughout the years affirmed his love and his hope for Ishmael how could Abraham do this to her how could he allow this to happen to her didn't she mean anything to him how could he put his own son out on the street uh, wasn't this a cold and heartless act he puts her out now she and Ishmael are alone wandering in the wilderness she has nowhere to turn no parents to find no siblings to help her this was like a divorce Hagar, at the request of Sarai, had become Abraham's wife. Now she's divorced and it's devastating because it tore her away. It tore her son away from the people that they loved. They go through stages of grief and bereavement. They go through denial and isolation. They go through anger and bargaining. They go through depression and finally they come to a point of acceptance that we're out here all by ourselves. This incident had an awful and devastating effect on their heart. It dismantled their self-esteem. It inspired hatred. Come on. It, it fueled anger. It agitated animosity. Has anybody ever been treated bad and it made you mad? Come on, just be honest with me in here. It crushed the soul and the spirit with the painful weight of shock and rejection and abandonment and depression. It destabilized their very foundation. It was a painful thing because a union had been broken. Flesh and bone had been severed. And I know uh, she was only his wife in a limited sense. But a bond had been formed and now it was broken and there was no anesthesia. Oh, that could numb the pain that they were feeling. And many of us have wandered in the wilderness of separation. And we've been alone and aimless, having no community of concerned personalities to share our burdens. No one to help us push through our pain. No one to cheer us on to recovery. So we drifted in the wilderness of darkness. We roamed in the reeds of ruin. We strolled through the stubs of separation and meander through the mire of the melancholy. 
Has anyone ever 